Hello and welcome back to Handheld Computing. Today we're having a look at the Janata 720 and the Janata 728. The two devices are near identical in terms of specs and design, and we'll have a look at the differences towards the end of the video. The Janata 720 is widely regarded as the best handheld PC ever produced, but by the time it came into production by the end of 1999, most companies had already swapped to the production of pocket PCs. This left NEC and HP as the last of a dying breed producing handheld PCs, which is a shame because this form factor is still very popular today and with improved specs I think there could still be a market for such a thing. If you have a handheld PC I would strongly recommend a trip over to HPC Factor. On here you'll find quite an active forum with lots of very friendly people. You'll also find that there's a large software library which covers handheld PCs right from the Velo 1 right the way through up to the Janata 728 and the NEC Mobile Pro 900C as well as lots of obscure handheld PCs in the middle. They've also recently started a Scion forum, so if you have a Scion, pop over there and have a look. Again, it's quite active, and if more people go and look, the more active it will be. Taking a look at the outside, this device looks almost identical to its predecessor. We've got the same logo badge, we've got a button on the top, the case is blue instead of that purple colour. Looking at the front, no changes here, we've got the same buttons, the indicator light for when the screen is off, the stylus silo with a little clip so it pops out. On this side we've got the power button and power indicating LED, and there's a little flap behind which is the modem jack. At the back is the battery, it's the same size battery, so these are interchangeable between these devices. We've got the non-standard USB socket used for synchronization if you're not using the cradle. And we've got the infrared port and a lanyard hole. Coming to this side, we see the first major change, a headphone jack. And this makes a huge difference because this is now a multimedia device, not just a palm top. This is a smart card reader. Unfortunately, HP never implemented the smart card reader in earnest. And so while there is a piece of software that allows you to read some older smart cards, most of them simply don't work. Below that we've got the PC card slot and there's the release catch for it. And then underneath we've done away with that weird foot assembled thing that was there and had the speaker and everything combined. And instead we've got a speaker here uh, so it's got more depth and sounds much better than the previous one. The port alignments are in the same place as the previous device. We've got the release catch for the battery and under here is the compact flash card door and the backup battery slot. Um, so this is a much better design than on the 680. Opening the device, you can see that it's almost identical to the 680. There's the 680. As you can see, the keyboards are a different color, but otherwise are a direct replacement. So you can use a 680 keyboard to replace a 720 and vice versa. There are a couple of minor differences, not just the colors. So instead of above the keys having F numbers, we've now just got three icons, which is a new shortcut for this keyboard. And we've lost the F numbers. In addition, these two keys have been swapped around. So we get the mail first and then we get the Internet Explorer. The other obvious change is in the silkscreen buttons. So we've now got access using this one to the HP settings. So we've got a display profile setting. You can set up various different display profiles, which can then be accessed using Alt and the mail key. You can set up various volume profiles, which is Alt and then the record button. And you can also adjust the memory. So this is handy because we now don't have to go to control panel to adjust the memory, or we can go there directly by double clicking this button. Last but not least, on this page, we have another shortcut, which takes us straight into the power settings. So this is quite a handy silkscreen button to have because it allows you to quickly adjust any of the settings that you might need. Next up, instead of the up and down arrows we had on the previous model, we've actually got a backup button, which is great. So you can then back up either the whole device or just your databases and you can add password protection if you wish. Equally, using the same menu settings, you can easily restore your Janata back to where it was. So this is handy. 
So next on the silk screen buttons is this, which is the HP dial up button. Um, I don't use this on my normal setup. I actually have that um, as a calculator button, which is much more useful in my mind. So we'll come out of that since I don't use dial up anymore. And last but not least, we have access to the Windows Media Player. So this is a new addition on the HPC um, and will play MP3s. Um, as I said before, it does sound a lot better than on the 680. Let me just bring this in a bit. So what I'm not saying is it sounds amazing. What I am saying is it's better. But it's better still if you use the headphone jack. So after you've first started up your Genada 720, this is what the desktop looks like. Of course, most of these shortcuts are completely redundant because you have hotkeys for them. So I'm just gonna carry on and just get rid of those. I will just point out that there is a Yahoo Messenger on here. Obviously, you're not gonna get that to work now. But at the time, I imagine it was excellent. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the applications. There is one more shortcut item I've not mentioned with the J and that takes you to the Genada website. Now, obviously that doesn't exist anymore. Um, so it doesn't go anywhere, but yeah, that's what it did. So looking at the applications compared to the 680, nothing's really changed that much. There are a few tweaks to Word and Excel, but we've got a slightly better version of Internet Explorer, which we still frankly wouldn't use these days. Um, we've got access to inbox service, which will synchronize um, with Outlook, or you can use it on dial-up, or you could use it on dial-up. These days you would use NPOP instead. We've got access to a voice recorder, so you can easily record a message. We've got the contacts application, very much the same as last time, no real changes. The task application, again, this is just the same and the agenda or calendar application. And again, we've got the same views we had last time. So we've got a day view, a week view, a month view, which just shows you circles of time that's used and a year overview. But much more useful is this, which is HP's quick view. And on here, you get a month at a glance and it writes in any appointments and things. So it's much easier to see. It gives you access to your calendar quite easily and it gives you access to your to-do list straight away as well. So that's a much more handy application in my mind. We've also got the quick notes. So this is like a short database. You can just type a memo and then paste it into one of the other applications if you wish. Um, and it lists them down the side so they're easy to search and find notes. Again, we've got pocket access, not particularly good. And actually, I think in many ways, not as good as the pen computing um, database that we looked at with the Velo One. So Excel has one major change, and that is that now Pocket Excel can save itself, not only as an Excel 5, but as an Excel 97 workbook. This can be very useful, as then you can directly open it on your computer when you get back. Equally, you can open um, an Excel 97 document. So I've put a couple of samples on the storage card, XLS. So here's the sample one. So I'm gonna use this one, plan maker sample. So what you'll see on here is that we've got a list of numbers, just generic numbers. There's nothing else on here um, at all. But on here, I have plan maker installed, which I tend to use instead of pocket Excel. And if I open the same one in Plan Maker, what you'll see is there's actually a graph just below. So this opens fine in Plan Maker because Plan Maker will open pretty much anything that you can do in Excel 97. But in Pocket Excel, we lose the graph. So it only opens the data. We've got no hint that there's a graph there. And if we then save it like this, the graph will actually disappear. Finally, we come to Word. So Word, much like Excel, now has the ability to save as an Office 97 doc file, and it can also open an Office 97 doc file. We have the same limitations that we have with Excel, so it won't open images embedded or embedded graphs or anything else, but it will open essentially text and basic formatting. Again, SoftMaker Office gets around all this and you can open anything you want, but that's a different video. 
Coming back to the start menu, we've got the same cascading start menu that we've seen on the 680. We've got very much the same items in, so under accessories we've got Ink Writer, um, which does fulfill some of the missing bits from Pocket Word, because it is possible on here to do kind of rudimentary drawings, which we let's see in Pocket Word on the Pocket PC. Under communications, we've got these installed already. So these are actually for Wi-Fi usage. If you've got an Aeronet card, this is already installed, you can use it directly. With some of the new ones, you need to get drivers that not all Wi-Fi cards will work with this device. And we've got the PC link settings, remote networking. There is a terminal setting. This does allow you to connect to a Windows XP machine or similar um, and do a remote network session. I might do a video on that in the future. Below that, we've got the HP applications. So we've got backup. We've got this new one, HP Chai VM, which is actually a Java virtual machine. So this can now run Java and it can be paired into Pocket Internet Explorer. So you can run independent applets simply by browsing for them. So there's a couple pre-installed. Here's Tic-Tac-Toe, hit run, and there we have it. So there's a few other games that have been designed in Java that'll run on here. Under options, you can enable it with an Internet Explorer so it can run basic Java applets. It's only up to Java 1.2, I believe. And um, so anything after that, any later Java won't run for obvious reasons. In here, we've also got access to HP dial-up, but of course there's a quick button there, quick pad, which is down there, and the HP viewer, which is just there. And in utilities, we've got the hotkey, the security, and the HP settings, which is the same as this. In the hotkeys, you can alter which buttons open what. So actually, I normally have Internet Explorer button tag to open DE clock, which is a huge desktop clock, which looks like this. Much more useful than an out of date Internet Explorer. You can also adjust the hard icons or silk screen buttons, as I would call it. Um, as I say, normally I have dial up set to calculator. Again, just much more useful than an out of date dial up modem. Under Office, we've got quick access to these, but of course we have fast buttons to them on here. Down here we've got Outlook, and again we've got shortcut keys here. So normally I would tidy all of these up if I was to be using this as my day-to-day -day device. I just get rid of all these shortcuts. The most notable thing that is missing is we no longer have uh, B fax, which I'm sure you're all very sad about because how will you send a fax? Um, but more importantly, we're missing B search, which was very handy because it would search the system and open files for you. So instead I use this which is search HPC, and it does basically the same job, uh, allowing you to input a file name and then search for it. It's free and I'll put a link below. We also lost the macro program, but to be honest, it was a bit of a novelty and I've never used it for any real purpose. So I haven't bothered finding an alternative. Competition time. Thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed and entered the competition. I really do appreciate it. This is my way of giving you a little bit of something back. Entries are well and truly closed. They closed last week. I'm just very late in making this video. So let's see who the winner is. So as I promised in my last video, we're gonna use the Scion 2 in order to pick our winner. So I've written a little program called draw. So it will randomly select a winner. There is a list of all the um, people who've entered in here. And let's see who the winner is. Drum roll please. And the winner is Aza Abdulev. So Aza, to claim your prize, all you need to do is email me at hugehandheldcomputing at gmail.com. Send me your username, your actual name, and your address, and then I'll email you back and make arrangements for sending out your prize. Thank you to everyone who entered the competition. It was quite interesting to see that the 720 and the Scion 5 MX are actually by far and away the devices that were mentioned the most, and I think this is due to the form factor. The keyboard is one of the main reasons that this form factor is still so sought after, but not just because inputting text is easier on a keyboard. In fact, it's because a lot of productivity comes from the shortcuts that we use on a keyboard in order to speed up tasks. So Ctrl and Z will undo, Ctrl and Y will redo, and the usual Ctrl and X to cut, Ctrl and V to paste, Ctrl and A to select all, Ctrl and C to copy, and Ctrl and V to paste again all work perfectly, which can be very time-saving. In addition, we have lots of other standard shortcuts. So Windows C will open the control panel. 
Windows H will bring up Help. Windows E brings up an Explorer window. Windows I lets you calibrate the screen. And Windows M will minimize all open windows. Alt and Tab brings up a Task Manager, which is very useful, of course. In addition to that, Control will allow you to select multiple different files from anywhere on the screen. And holding shift lets you make a selection of a group of files. This can rapidly speed up copying and pasting files from one directory to another. And holding alt will bring up a context menu which allows you to check properties, cut, paste and open. The ability to use shift and control in this manner just mean that it's so much faster to select multiple files and move them around within the file system, especially when compared to something with stylus input like a Palm OS device or a Pocket PC, and even compared to modern devices. Try and move odd multiple files around on your Android device or your iPhone. What a pain. Much easier with either a mouse and keyboard, or in this case, a stylus and keyboard. In terms of differences between the Genada 720 and the 728, there are only three real differences. The first and most obvious is the color of the casing. So we've got this nice silver blue design as opposed to the plain blue and the big badge on here. Other than that, physically, they are identical. In terms of hardware, the CPU is the same at 206 megahertz with the ARM core. The main difference is that instead of the 32 meg of RAM, the Genada 728 gets 64, which does make a big difference if you're multitasking. Other than that, the system is the same. It's based around the Core 3 version. We've got the same version of Internet Explorer and Pocket Outlook, and none of the core applications have changed. There is one other difference, and that is there's a slight difference in the way the graphics are done. Now, I'm unsure as to whether this is a different graphics chipset or whether this is a software function, but it causes some games not to work as I'll show you. So because that graphics are handled slightly differently on the 728, if you try and run HPC Doom, this is what happens. An illegal operation. However, if instead you use the run program, find the file and then add the minus fix vid to the end, this fixes the video issue, and therefore it should run perfectly normally. Let's see. So I've been using the 720 and then the 728 as my daily driver for about 15 years now. Um, I did use the Scion an awful lot prior to that, and I still love the Scion, but the color screen and the headphone socket just make this a better all-round device in terms of what I use. If you have a 720, the upgrade to a 728 doesn't bring many benefits in actual fact, which is a shame because there were so many enhancements made on pocket PCs within the same time, but it just didn't follow through to the handheld form factor. So unless you need the extra RAM, I would just stick with a 720. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a thumbs up would be nice and a subscribe would be excellent. Thank you for watching. My name's Hugh and this is Handheld Computing.